Welcome to the Farming Without the Bank podcast, the show with a no BS approach to money, hosted by a farm strategy expert and authorized IBC practitioner. Join us as we get real and expose the flaws of traditional financial institutions in order to help farmers take control of their finances, create peace of mind, grow their wealth, and leave a legacy. Now, here's your host, Mary Jo Ehrman. Hello, and welcome to today's podcast. I want to talk to you today about Dave Ramsey. He is not my most favorite topic, but guess what? I got an email that said, please tell me why Dave Ramsey does not like whole life insurance. And so I listen. If you guys are asking me to talk about a certain topic, I am going to listen. And if it is a worthy topic to talk about, I am going to talk about it. And I have a lot of... Dave Ramsey followers as clients, which is a little bit odd. Having a Dave Ramsey follower as a client is kind of like having a banker as a client. I've got some of those too. I have a guy that owns a bank. I have some lenders. I have a guy that's on the board of a bank. And so I have bankers, but Dave Ramsey fans are kind of on that same level. You know, they don't agree with maybe everything that he says, But there are some good things about Dave, and let's start there. You know, I really like the fact that he teaches you how to manage a budget. He teaches you how to do a budget. I don't do that with my clients because I don't have the patience for it. I'm not going to pretend to be somebody I'm not and be all patient. I am naturally a very frugal individual, and I guess I just never spent more than I made. And so I never had a problem with that. And I, I don't always understand what people need. And I don't have the patience to understand that they want things they can't afford. So Dave is fantastic on that front. He's great to get you back where you need to be. Sometimes his debt snowball is something that needs to be used. And I will look at that for some people who have a lot of debt. We'll go in and see how is the best way to pay that stuff off. Because not always, it is a very rare occasion, but not always does it pay to put it in a policy first. And so, you know, there is, there's that. Um, And you just really watch what you spend your money on and you get some stuff paid down. And so to some people being debt free is exactly what they want to do. And that's fantastic for them as well. And so there are some good things about Dave. And then there are some things that maybe I'm not going to agree with, and that is his stance on whole life. And a lot of people in our industry, the guys that are on the podcast Wealth Without the Bank or Wall Street, Joey and Russ are colleagues of mine, super awesome guys. They have a podcast as well, and they have really tore apart Dave's rate of return and why he thinks life insurance compared to the market or term insurance isn't the best thing. And I'm not even going to go there because there's absolutely, I don't feel that there's a whole lot of credit to what he's talking about because he's not comparing it to whole life. And so when he starts talking about whole life and he starts understanding dividend paying whole life, then we can have a conversation But he doesn't understand that, nor does he talk about that. A lot of what Dave talks about is the fees and charges inside of those policies. And if you've read my book, Farming Without the Bank, or even Wealth Without the Bank or Wall Street, you will see that I have a chapter and I talk about bad policies. And Dave is talking about universal life, variable life, indexed UL, They sometimes call them flexible premium pain, something or another. And all of those policies have these huge fees and charges in them, which I absolutely do not agree with. And I have wrote about that in my book. And so Dave and I agree on something. It's just that he's not using the right terminology, which is a true indication of the fact that he doesn't understand 
life insurance. And if he does understand it, he's not talking about it correctly. He's not using the right terminology, which then leads me to believe why is he maybe being deceptive and lumping it all together when it's not the same product. And so it would be like saying all IRAs are bad when you have a Roth and a traditional. Well, a Roth is going to grow income tax-free, right? There's some better benefits in a Roth on the tax side of it than a regular IRA, but I don't lump them together. And so why is he lumping all whole life insurance together? And so let's talk about the word whole life insurance. Just a little education here to really clarify what he's talking about. There's really two types of insurance. There's term insurance, and then there is permanent insurance. Permanent insurance is insurance that lasts your entire life. Underneath the permanent umbrella, we have universal life, variable life, indexed life, flexible premium pain, and then you have whole life, okay? Those top four that I talked about, those are all tied to the market. There are lots of market charges because you have most of the money is invested in a mutual fund. So you have the same fees that you would have if you had it in the market. That is money that part of your premium out of pocket money is going to pay for that stuff. It's not going to the death benefit. It's going to pay those fees and those charges. Those fees and charges can get super expensive. The death benefit cost is basically based on a renewable term in those policies. And so those, the cost of insurance gets more expensive as you get older. If the return in the policy is not enough to make up the difference from what the agent told you to pay, if you're not paying enough premium to cover those fees and charges, it's going to start taking money from cash value. Well, those policies will lapse. There's a lot of costs there. And I totally agree with Dave. They are crap policies. I don't like them. And I am sure somebody here is going to tell me I'm wrong because they're not bad. Okay, if an agent knows how to sell them, they're maybe not a horrible product. But I, in 10 years, I've never seen one that survives. So I am equally as passionate and irritated about it as. Dave, clearly, you can hear it in my voice. It irritates the crap out of me that people are selling these policies and they're tying somebody's death benefit to the market. And then they get old enough where they're ready to pass away and the darn policy falls apart. I mean, seriously, it's crap. And so Dave is seeing this because these products are from the 80s when the market was fantastic and life insurance companies said, hey, we need to be selling something to compete with the market, but guess what? The market's not doing that today. So for heaven's sakes, like he's right on that aspect of it. Where he's wrong is he's not talking about whole life. Whole life is not tied to the market. There are guarantees in those products. In a universal life, in a variable, in an index, there may be guarantees there too, but is the guarantee even going to be enough to cover the cost of fees and charges? No. So you have to look at what you are buying, and you have to understand what Dave is talking about. He's not talking about whole life. When you look at whole life and you say, okay, there are guarantees and it's going to be there till the day I die and I know exactly what I'm going to make on this, that's a whole different ballgame. And if he does talk about whole life, he says, well, we can get a better rate of return in the market. Okay, first of all, prove that because he's not proving that. Secondly, this isn't a market product. If you want to play the market, go get an IRA. Don't put your life insurance, don't substitute a market product for life insurance or don't tie your life insurance to the market. We're not talking about a rate of return. If you understand the infinite banking concept, it's not about rate of return. It's about liquidity control and guarantees. 
if you're talking about rates of return and you're using the infinite banking concept or you're using farming without the bank in rate of return in the same sentence, you have missed the point of what we're teaching you. And that is what Dave is missing, that we, are, we have death benefit, which is super important. I don't care if you are debt free. You still need to have death benefit because you still need to be buried. A funeral is about $15,000 on average. No death benefit. Now I get to sell all your assets and pay for the funeral expenses, but I have to sell your assets to do so. So what is wrong with buying a discounted dollar? And Dave never talks about the value of that discounted dollar we're buying for life insurance. We're handing that off income tax-free. Where are all of those topics when Dave is talking about life insurance? Whole life insurance, not universal, variable, indexed, flexible, premium, paying, whatever it is. Whole life insurance, dividend paying whole life insurance. He's not, has he ever looked at how we structure a policy that we can get a lot of cash value in there? Because he says, oh, it all goes to the death benefit cost. All of it goes to death benefit. Well, if you have traditional whole life, the first couple of years, you don't have any cash value. By year 15 to 20, yeah, you're going to break even. It's not going to be this fabulous upfront premium filled policy like we're selling you, but it's still a decent traditional whole life policy with guarantees and a death benefit. We're structuring it a little bit differently than the traditional whole life. But I'm not going to tell you traditional whole life is bad. I see people with those policies and they're fantastic. And guess what? You can still use the cash value. You still get to borrow against it. In a universal variable and index, there is a surrender charge. There is no surrender charge in whole life. Is he breaking those apart? Honestly, I don't listen to the guy. I'm only hearing what my clients are telling me, okay? And so that's all I'm going to talk about are the things that I talk about with my clients that Dave says, well, these things are bad. And guess what? When I see what he's talking about and I can show them that whole life doesn't do this, then great. We're not even on the same page. We're not even talking about the same product. We're talking about permanent life insurance, but we're not talking about his product underneath permanent life insurance. So is Dave right or wrong? He's right when he uses the right terminology. But I don't even care about the rate of return part of it because he doesn't even know the product. So there are some good things with Dave, and then there are some things that aren't so good. The other thing that is very discouraging to me is I've listened to some of the YouTube videos of people talking about whole life and, and they're trying to make a point that they're, try, they're truly talking about whole life, not universal or variable. Um, and they're trying to make this point and Dave hangs up on them. Like, you know, I can't say I've ever hung up on anybody because they were making me mad. I don't have a radio show either, but let's talk about it. Let's have a conversation about it. But if you're not educated to have that conversation, then maybe you can't have that conversation. I'm not even going to, you know, a lot of people will say, well, who's paying Dave? Well, who's paying me? I make commission based off of life insurance. So that's null and void, right? He's making commission based off of his rates of return. The end all is we get to decide what we want to do and we get to educate ourselves and we don't have to take everything Dave says is gospel. We don't have to take everything Mary Jo says is gospel, but you do have to do your due diligence to prove to yourself that what I'm saying is correct. That is up to you to do that. If you tell me I'm wrong, then go find that information. Take what I'm trying to tell you and look for that to really see, is Dave wrong? Or am I just blowing smoke up your skirt, right? I mean, I'm not the kind of person that's gonna do that, but we have to talk about the same product. So again, I love my Dave Ramsey clients. Why? Because when they come to me, they typically are debt-free. 
they typically understand a budget and they're not spending money just to spend money. They have money to put into a whole life insurance policy, and they have a great handle on their finances because they've gone through the whole whatever school thing is that he does. And that's fantastic. And he will get you to the point where you're debt-free. And that's awesome. But debt-free is not wealthy. Debt-free is just debt-free. If you want to create wealth, and you want to have uninterrupted compound interest, and you want to have an and asset that you can put money into and still have liquidity, control, and guarantees, there's only one option for that, and that is dividend-paying whole life using the infinite banking concept. That's it. There's not another option out there. What Dave is teaching you is or assets. You put your money into an IRA or you go do this with it, or you go do that with it. You can't do both things. Again, is Dave teaching you how to leverage your dollar so that you can have cash flow coming in? Or is he just saying you need to invest in the market and hope and pray that it's going to be there and put your savings, life savings at risk for retirement? And is that where he has the majority of his money? I don't know. I've never looked and I don't really care to spend my time on it. So I'm not going to look. If you want to look, you can go there. I do know him and Susie Orman are very much on the same level on that aspect of things. And I do know there is an article out there with Susie Orman saying, I only put a million dollars in the market because it's all I can afford to lose. Hmm. Think about that. It's all she can afford to lose. Where's the rest of her money? I believe she said it's in bonds because they're guaranteed. Guess where the life insurance company puts your money? Same place she's putting hers. It's just that they're buying them in bulk so they're making a better rate of return than what you would do on your own. And they're professionally managed for your benefit, not somebody else's. So if these people are giving advice, we need to look at where they have their money. If you want to see where I have mine, it's in dividend paying whole life. I'm not putting it in the market telling you to put your money here, okay? And if Dave wants you to put your money in the market and you want to put your money in the market, I had this conversation yesterday with a guy and he said, well, what if I can get 10% in the the market? I said, well, if you think that you can get 10% in the market, why don't you put it in the policy, make 4% even while you borrow against it to put it in the market to make another 10? Why don't you make 14 on it? He's like, oh, I never thought of that. Yeah, because that life insurance policy is an and asset, not an or asset. We have to get past that. And so that completely changes things. And that's not something that Dave is talking about. It's not something that Susie Orman is talking about. We have all these financial talking heads that are not looking at the whole story. And we have to look at the whole story. Because if we can do multiple things with it, it could be to our benefit. So I know that's a good 20-minute rant on Dave Ramsey. (laughs) And I I shouldn't call it a rant. Not really a rant. Um, But I'm equally as passionate about the, what I call, crappy policies. I'm equally as passionate about those as Dave is. And so obviously you can hear that, and Dave and I agree on that one thing. We're just not agreeing on his terminology because he's linking everything and bundling everything together, and it's not all the same. So if you are a Dave Ramsey fan, I just encourage you to really take a look at that. Do your due diligence. I have clients all the time that hear about it, and it sounds like it's too good to be true. And I 100% felt the exact same way. I did my due diligence. I read for four or five weeks straight and got as much information as I possibly could. 10 years ago when I did this, there just wasn't, there was nothing online for me to research. Today, there is so much to listen to. There's several people in our industry that have podcasts. There are lots of YouTube videos about infinite banking. There's a lot of education out there and you can get swept up in it. But I always encourage people, if you're doing your research and you come across a question, 
ask me. I am happy to answer it and happy to educate. You know, you do more research on whole life insurance to make sure that it's a a great product than you're most likely doing on the 401k you're invested in or the IRAs or the Roth and where all that money is sitting inside that mutual fund. When was the last time you did research on that? So I would encourage you, if you're going to research whole life because you're worried it's a scam, research where you have your money now. Research the broker that is managing that money. Where is his portfolio? How much money was he making? How much money does he have? If you're going to research everything else, make sure that you're being fair with yourself and you're researching everything you have your money in. Do yourself the favor. Make sure you do your due diligence on all fronts. So I hope that helped answer some of the questions that you might have with why Dave Ramsey doesn't like this um, outside of getting into his numbers, which I don't even think is important because this isn't about rate of return. That is all I need to know to make my decision. If you want more information on the actual numbers and getting into all of that, then go over to the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast and look for their Dave Ramsey podcast where they really... Russ and Joey really tear it apart and they can get into the numbers of all of that stuff. So hope that helped you and you enjoyed this episode. Please leave me a review on iTunes if you would be so kind to do that or whatever podcast app you are using. I would much appreciate it because apparently that helps with the ranks or ranking. I don't know how that all works, but um If you could leave a review, I would very much appreciate it. And we will see you on the next podcast, or I guess we'll talk to you on the next podcast. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to the Farming Without the Bank podcast. We hope today's episode has inspired you to take control of your finances in new ways. Don't forget to check out our website, farmingwithoutthebank.com, and engage with us on our Facebook page, Farming Without the Bank. Join us next week as we smash more financial myths and empower you to accomplish your financial goals. 